Okay, so welcome to part one of the Structured Walk video series. Um, if you've been on the page for a while, you know I recommend these things every single day for just about every type of behavior. It doesn't matter what it is, I'm recommending these things because in my opinion, this is the most important thing any of you guys can be doing with your dog. It is um, such a valuable thing to be doing. It is where you can, uh, where the foundation builds with the relationship with your dog. So. Um, what is a structured walk? Um, a structured walk is basically, it's an uninterrupted walk. Um, it's not allowing your dog to pee or poop or sniff or mark or do whatever the hell it wants to do. It's, um, it's a serious walk. Yeah, if you treat your walk serious, you'll get serious results. Um, when you take your dog on these walks, it's going to get the opportunity to do those things, but it doesn't get to do those things unless it's on your time. Uh, so what I mean by that is um, I like to pick spots on my walk where I let my dogs have full leash. You know, I get to the spot, I'll put them into a, a sit, and then I give them a release command, and they can, I give them full leash, and they're allowed to sniff all the sniffs, pee, poop, do whatever they want. We hang out for as long as I feel like it, not them. Um, when I'm done and I'm ready to go, um, it's back to the walk. They're right by my side. And we're, we're on a mission. Um, like I said, if you treat your walk serious, you'll get serious results. Um, these walks, when you start doing these things, um, and I recommend you do them every single day, when you start doing these walks, the information um, your dog learns, um, everything that happens, and you're going to run into so many situations in your, your walk, but um, it's training in disguise. All these things that happen on the walk, these structured walks are going to build in, you know, auto leave. It's the, your dog's going to learn how to like stay next to you when you're talking to somebody. Your dog's going to learn how to react when other people walk by with other dogs or with children or if it's leash reacted with cars. It's going to learn so much every single day just by going on these walks. Um, um, it's training in disguise. and. Once you start doing these, I guarantee you, I guarantee you will transform your dogs. You will see a huge difference in your dog's just overall demeanor. And anything else you're training or working on in the house, um, a lot of unwanted behaviors um, become easier to solve be just because of these walks. Um, the, the, the foundation and the bond and the relationship and the, the, the pack order that happens because of these um, it's invaluable. If there's any one thing you can do, it's this. This is by far the most important thing I tell everybody all the time. It's the first thing I do with any new dog that I, I'm bringing into my house or I'm working with. Or I'm, it's the first thing. It's how you establish trust. It's how you build a relationship with the dog. It's how it learns that human is making the decisions. I don't have to. That all happens on these structured walks. So in this video series, I'm going to try to kind of go through the steps of how you set the walks up for success, um, what happens when you're out on the walks, and um, overall the tools that you're going to need to do these things. So um, I'll kind of just break that down real quickly. There's a, there's a pre-walk routine that I have before I go on my walks. Um, that'll be the next video where um, I teach you how to get your dogs into a calm state of mind and um, set the walk up for a nice calm walk. That's the first thing you got to do. Um, the second thing is just kind of a couple basic leash handling skills that you can do when you're out on these walks. So if you're one of these people that have been walking your dog um, like this and, you know, if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you want some help either, you know, with just basic leash walking stuff or um, other unwanted behaviors because we're pointing in this right direction. But if you're one of these people that allowed your dogs to, you know, 
you let the dog go wherever you want to go, wherever it wanted to go, and you let it stop, and you let it sniff, and you let it pee and do all this stuff. Um, you people are going to have a little bit harder times than the people that have the brand new puppies that you're starting this stuff from the beginning. But nonetheless, you should start seeing progress with all of these. With all the steps, you should start seeing progress on a daily basis. Um, that doesn't mean you won't have a day where you regress and you go backwards a little bit, but it doesn't mean anything. Um, you, you you should see progress and like I said in the at the end at the end this never stops but you will see a huge difference in your behavior your dog's behavior if you haven't been doing these and you start doing these today um, I guarantee you um, in a real short time you're gonna notice some big differences um, you're not only gonna notice big differences in your dog you're gonna notice big differences in yourself um, so I, I I hate saying this, but 90% of the time, the problem isn't that your dog doesn't listen. It's not the, the harness, the gentle leader, and we'll talk about tools in a few minutes, but it's the person on the other end of the leash. Um, you're gonna have to learn to change. You're gonna have to learn how to take deep breaths and be calm and be a confident leader. Um, if you're hyper, um, if your body language sucks, um, if you're sad, if you, whatever your emotions are, your dog feeds off of this stuff. Um, uh, you know, it's, I love the saying, you can't fake out a dog because you can't. You know, you can't pretend that you're, you're not bummed out. You can't pretend you're in a, not in a bad mood. If you're stressed, um, I posted a post not too long about, ago about how I had a really shitty day and tried to take my dogs for a walk. And my dogs were just kind of just being, you know, complete brats on the leash. In the first 10 yards or maybe two minutes walking out the door, and I knew that the walk was going to suck. And it wasn't because of them. It was because of me. It was because my energy sucked. these walks are going to teach you how to have the right energy and because once you start seeing when you have the right energy how your dogs respond you're like oh that actually works and then you start you build off of it and like i said um your walks are going to completely change there's a couple of examples of how the walks change when you do this stuff um if you're the person that follows the dog you get the retractable leash you let them do whatever the hell they want to do um now um your dog is right by your side, and I'm going to tell you, stop paying attention to your dog. Stop focusing so much on the damn dog, and, you know, yes, Fido, no Fido, and don't do this, don't do that, and blah, 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 blah. They're all People are always talking to the dog. All your dog's doing is hearing, you know, human making noise and tail wags that gets them excited. You know what gets them to chill out? It's just calm, silence, nothing. Um... I, I try not to really talk to my dogs too much. Um, I, I'll mark and reward certain behaviors when we're doing training stuff, but um, if you're using baby voices and constantly talking to your dog, you're just firing it up. Um, I know it's human instinct. I know when your dog's freaking out on the end of the leash, you wanna, it's okay, it's okay, and you wanna calm it down and because you're embarrassed the dog's doing, you're rewarding shitty behavior, re, you're reinforcing it. These walks are gonna teach you how to not do that. And if you can start getting in the habit on these walks of not constantly talking to your dog and being, like I said, the baby voices and getting the dog all fired up. And there's a time and place for all that. When you're playing with your dog and, you know, you're trying to get your dog's attention, all, by all means, it's all, all great. When you're on these walks, um, it's different. Like I said, you treat them seriously and you'll get serious results. So body language is huge. Um, um, when I'm out on these walks, um, because the dog's by my side now and I'm not paying attention to them, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on my destination. That's it. I'm going where I want to go. Dog starts to go to the left or the right to sniff things. I'm giving strong leave it commands, little leash information to get them to just leave it. I don't stop. I don't change pace. I keep going. I control the walk. I control where we're going, not you. Your job is just to be next to me. That's it. Just be next to me. Um, so when 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 your walks are structured like this, and the dog you know starts to get the hang of it, it's next to you, what happens is, is you start you start scanning like the street and stuff or wherever you're walking, and because you're in control of the walk, you're on a mission. You you know, and what I mean by scanning is you 
you you see all the things before your dog sees them usually. So when you start doing these walk, walks every day, you start to learn your dog's strengths and weaknesses. So you can become a strong advocate for your dog. So when you start to see, you know, something that makes your dog leash reactive, you can set your dog up for success. You know how it's going to react. You can shorten up the leash. You can decide to turn them around. You can, whatever you want to do, you already have, um, uh, you're, 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 you're in front of it. So when the, the dog is leash reactive, my, um, the way I handle it is I, I don't acknowledge that shit. I don't acknowledge the, the dog, the person, the car, whatever it is. I shorten up the leash. Just to leave a command. Every time the dog goes to, to acknowledge that thing, I just say, leave it, leave it, and I keep on trucking on. Over time, the dog's reaction gets less and less and less. They know the second they see that thing, they're going to get a leave it, you know. And it's not, I'm not hurting the dog or anything. I'm just, I'm poking it. I'm saying, dude, stop doing that shit. It's all I'm doing. It's about just giving a little bit of information. Um, it's not about hurting the dogs. So that's um that's the the gist of a structured walk it's um, a walk on where you control the walk the dog is following you um you're in control of this stuff so you do these every single day you're going to see huge differences in your dog so i hope this helps a little bit in just the breakdown and then when i have my dogs in this video i just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit and in the next video I'm just going to do a small segment on just the different tools and why I use what I use. But that's the gist of the structured walk. It is a walk with zero interruptions. You're in charge. Your dog's job is just to follow. If you can master this, the relationship between you and your dog will, will change. You will transform your dogs. I, I like to say overnight because I, I did this um, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I, I did the things all the wrong way. I learned about these things. This is actually what got me hooked into all the dog training stuff. And I just saw the instant results. And like I said, if it's the only thing you can you know, do with your dog, you do these every day, you're, you're on a really good start and um, having a really awesome relationship with your dog. So stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be on, um, on the tools. So peace.